back in the days when the huge gold nuggets were found in Victoria. Most people were so impressed with the sheer size and number found in the relatively small gullies that they thought they actually grew on the surface of the earth. When you consider on average four to eight gold nuggets weighing over 50 ounces each and hundreds of smaller gold nuggets were often found clean and very pure with no quartz in them at all. It is a well-known fact that gold originates in quartz reefs and pieces over half an ounce are actually quite rare in the reefs themselves. I wonder if that's a mine shaft. The only way to find out is to jump in. There's no way I'm jumping in. <laughs> now, well, that sort of that sort of tells me that this could be the outcrop. The old time has found it. This is the uh, quartz outcrop containing gold. My point is that the large pieces found in these areas had to have come from the reefs. Anyhow, the theory was that the chemicals in the dirt would act just like an electroplating process we know of today in a laboratory or factory. The only thing that was missing in the theory was the electrical current to carry the particles in the ground to coat the gold pieces. But they eventually explained the whole process with a large concentration of lightning bolt strikes which struck the trees and earth over the millions of years. And the evidence they obtained certainly well supported this idea and almost became the accepted theory as how the Victorian gold fields had so many large gold nuggets and in such small pockets of ground. That's quite a quartzy ground there. It's pretty good. It's mineralized. What you've got to stay away from is this type of earth here. It's very soft. Very flowery. It's only got the light pieces of silver foil, bits of iron, bits of rubbish. But here is an important tip. Take note of the trees. Trees adapt to the changing ground conditions very slowly. Dead or dying trees is a dead giveaway as to where the gold is because the lower sections were often ancient lakes or water saturated areas where the trees died young because of wet feet or too much heavy mineralization to adapt to. The gully you see here had a huge number of really big gold nuggets less than two feet deep. I always like looking at the trees because it tells you the age of the area and whether the ground or not has been disturbed around the area. That's a very old tree, that one. Actually found my first gold nugget, quarter ounce there, beside a tree exactly like that, or a stump, a rotted out old stump. It's funny how you remember these things. It seems that gold truly doesn't belong on the surface of the ground but it is often found that way. So how do the scientists explain something which belongs underground so often be found on top? But potato sized nuggets were found all throughout this area and in the gullies. Obviously many of the mountains we see are pushed up by underground forces and some areas are eroded over time which allows the heavier materials to gather in the lower sections of the gullies. Actually that's a runoff from a gully but uh, huge gold nuggets are found right around this area. Which is why you find rocks on top of the ground but are most often found deeper underground and why topsoil is mostly found on top of the ground. Reefs are white quartz surrounding the surface every foot of which contained gold visible to the naked eye excited neither curiosity nor inquiry and the careless shepherd whose earnings amounted to no more than 10 or 15 shillings a week every day drew water from the creek grains of gold far exceeding in value the simple fee of the run on which he was a labourer this is where the big nuggets are 
So if you don't find anything, you don't find anything. But if you find something, it might be a good size one. Fingers crossed. Uh, up there, we're looking at it. It doesn't seem to be a great deal of workings. We suspect there's going to be some deep reefs. And that's where all these, these big nuggets are coming from. Deep, deep reefs. Chances of getting up there anything with a metal detector is probably negligible because it's probably meters and meters down. But meters and meters down all the way over here, you can see all of the workings. And all these workings is where it's all washed and the guessing's moved from down this hill through here over the thousands and thousands of years. And that's where it's all ended up and that's where it's accessible maybe because there's a rock bottom, clay bottom, something, something that stops the gold from moving any down any further. So we're going to have to have a bit of explore around, just get a bit of a feel for the place before we can make too much more of an opinion. The general appearance of the gold producing country is not such to attract the attention of the ordinary traveller. He might pass over it again and again and never suspect that it contained the most valuable of metals. The common ores may be recognised by the most ignorant, but a stranger in a strange land would scarcely credit the evidence of his senses if he saw gold. He would, at the time, in all probability see iron pyrites and mica, and it would not occur to him that the treasures which in his youth he had considered as belonging only to a few favoured spots of the earth could be revealed in a place whose value was measured by the grass in which it grew. Years we've had plenty of people curious about finding gold. They're particularly interested in finding the big piece of gold, the retirement nugget. Well, here is my answer to that question. Let me start off by saying that science is often considered just as a way of explaining our surroundings. Sometimes the truth is subjective, and sometimes there are many truths. I like the one I'm about to reveal to you because it works for us. It can go anywhere because the whole town is basically gold. And filled. appears to fit all the facts on where gold has been found in the past. But just as you come out of the town, it's all gold field in there. In fact, half the town is built on gold. There's a gold detector shop right there. It's whites. And all just around this area here massive gold fields. Particularly in the large gold nugget producing areas like Denali in Victoria, Australia. The old timers found most of the gold in these gullies, but not all of it. And the modern day electronic prospector has a big advantage these days. This means some old timers settled around here. See that gully there to the left? This is because it is quite easy to cover a large area of ground in a relatively short time span. The only problem is that the metal detector is not very effective at finding very fine gold. In some parts the soil is very fine and flowery and other parts you've got piles of quartz and all the signs of gold. Sometimes evidence of mineralization and old time diggings is not so obvious. But if you look carefully, you will see here that it looks like it's been dug away and samples have been taken to check for gold. All right, we'll just check that area around that pothole. Just, I've got a very strong magnet here. In fact, on many gold fields, pieces over a quarter of an ounce in weight are particularly rare and some areas only have fine gold in the drips. There we go. It's highly mineralized area. We couldn't have picked a more perfect day. It's absolutely glorious. Perfect temperature, really serene. And there's an old timer's digging right there. What's that coil like down? It's nice and light compared to the dead end. It's 
Well, I mainly come off using the other one anyway. But on some gold fields, pieces over a quarter of an ounce in weight are quite common. And these are the fields that are most productive to the modern day electronic prospector. Just testing the coil. It's not too bad depth. So you can hear it. It definitely seems to be a little bit, tiny little bit more powerful than the 3000. However, nowadays the modern gold prospector now needs to look further afield as many of these areas are becoming depleted as the modern rush to find gold has led to some remarkable performance upgrades in detector electronics over the past 30 years or so. But if you want to find gold, all you have to do is go to the right spot and then keep out of the lighter soil. You have to find this really, really soft, light soil right next to the gold fields. And what we got to do is look for a patch that the old time has missed. Just bear with me a second and I'll explain what I mean by that. The softer, light soil only contains lighter materials and trash left over from the old timers. The gold is nearly always very separate and found in the heavy material areas usually with pieces of quartz in the mix. The gullies always have the heavier items at the lowest point. It is the same with detecting gold on the beach sands. Storms act like an old timer's pan. The storms shuffle the items and the currents cause gullies where heavier items become deposited according to weight, often near rips, cuts, low spots in the wet sand. In the case of panning, the gold sits on the bottom and the lighter stones and material is washed out of the pan and discarded. Often heavier gold items are found in areas where they get stuck, either on rocks or heavy clay or on the bottom of ancient riverbeds, sometimes at the bottom of an ancient waterfall or where the water flows and slows down on the outside of a river bends or even trapped amongst the roots of plants and trees. But the gold nuggets most accessible to the metal detector are the larger pieces closer to the outcrop or where they come out of the ground in the quartz reef. Let's jump over here. Right. You can see how the, the diggings are getting shallower and shallower. They continue up on the other side of the road. So what I'm going to do is hopefully the ground stays right and I'm going to go down further down. Let me try to explain what I believe happens here. My theory is that when the earth first formed, heavier materials spewed out from the center of the earth to compensate for the weight differences and irregularities on the surface. Similar to how we often put lead weights on a car wheel to compensate for imbalances and enable a smoother ride. Or how centrifugal force keeps a steel ball running around the outside of a roulette wheel until it loses speed and falls into a slot in the center of course. The heavier materials come to the surface to balance the weight differences. Whether it's true or not doesn't really matter, but I have found that the idea is helpful for when you are looking for your own gold pieces. My advice is that if you want to find gold on the gold field areas, then you have to keep out of the lighter earth because it only contains rubbish and other light materials. The rest is often prime nugget producing areas, particularly in areas like Denali and many other gold fields in Australia and possibly the world.